I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA Staff Professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're continuing this series on how to think your way around the golf course. We're going to look at hole number 12 right now. This is one of the easier par fours we've got out here. We do need to think a little bit about where the pin location is for where we want to try and position our tee shot, but it is pretty straightforward. Let's go. All right, hole number 12, uh, another long par four, 440 from the gold tees, working down to 320 from the forward tees. It's a little bit of a dog leg to the left, but realistically, this bunker should not come into play. The fairway to the right of it here is so wide that that shouldn't be an issue. And the only time where it could be is where the flag is positioned on the green, where we want to kind of take a tiger line off the tee to give us a better angle into the, the green itself but pretty straightforward, long par four. Just make sure that with your second shot, you commit to the yardage going into the green. Hole 12, it's not a short par four, 440 off the back tees, but it's certainly a lot friendlier than the last two holes that we've had to play. It's a, a much wide open tee shot in terms of our viewpoint. We can see pretty much everything that's in front of us. It does favor a right to left draw. We've got this bunker down on the left hand side, but my viewpoint, I'm actually looking through the trees at the road that bears around to the right. I can see the little fire hydrant through the trees. That's my aim line. If I hit it a little weak necky fade, it brings me out into the right half of the fairway towards the yellow sign. But if I do hit the draw coming off that fire hydrant, it shapes it around the bunker and is going to kick down a little bit off a tiny little speed slot. So that's the shot I really want to play. In terms of teeing up, I'm not too concerned with going left or right hand side of the tee box here this time. Because it's such a wide open shot. I don't need to force myself into a position to play the draw or fade. Let's just go straight at that hydrant and see what happens. And straight at the hydrant it is. All right, moving forwards again, we'll look at all the different tee options that we have. The blue tees are separated from the whites this time. So the viewpoint is going to be a little different between those two. We're shortening the hole from the, the golds to the blues, but the viewpoint really doesn't change much. It's uh, 397 though, so it's a good 40 yard gap between the two tees. We still realistically are going to aim towards that bend in the road through the trees towards the fire hydrant. The safe shot if we hit the little weak fade gives us and opens up into the right side of the fairway. It does make the approach longer, but again, chances are we might get a shot on our handicap here. So use that to your advantage. Don't think you've got to be aggressive going into the green. If you do hit the draw and you can hit that little slot forwards, you can be a little bit more confident in the shot going into the green and attack that flag a little bit more. It is a long hole, but this realistically should be something that we look at as a birdie chance or at least a net birdie chance. As we move on to the whites, so whites and green tee share a tee this time. We lose a little bit of elevation, so the bunker does kind of hide the left hand side of the fairway a little bit. It does show though just how wide open this fairway is to the right of that bunker. And that fire hydrant through the trees is splitting that fairway pretty evenly. It's a good 25 yards left of that, 25 yards right of it. Really wide open fairway to aim into. So we can grab the big stick and we can be confident, aim at that point, give it a big strong swing, get the ball as far down there as we can do. Same concept here with the green tees. You know, we're losing another 15 to 20 yards 
and although this time they've actually stepped the tees over onto the left hand side it, it's such a wide open fairway that we don't really have too much to worry about that bunker shouldn't really come into play it's there but we're not really seeing it that fairway is so wide open that our viewpoint really just sees grass and as we move forward to the red tees you can see as we come onto the red tee here the way that this tee has been cut and the way that the markers are facing they face well away from that trap on the left hand side we can see just how wide that fairway is so everything here is gearing up to play us into a big wide expanse of fairway that bunker shouldn't even be in our viewpoint i keep referencing it from each of the tee boxes but we're not really seeing that we've got such a big expanse of, of fairway to aim towards look through the trees in the distance at where that road is you'll see the little fire hydrant and if we go there we pull it a little bit left we've still got a huge amount of fairway to go into if we knock it a little bit right we've still got a lot of fairway to go into so everything there says it's a longer hole but realistically it's a friendly hole take the driver have a big swing at it get the ball advanced as far down as we can a huge target area to land in all right as we said it's a pretty straightforward hole 440 off the tee i got 20 plus yards of fairway on my left 20 plus yards fairway on my right so huge landing zone to come into my confidence booster is that that's the 150 marker right in front of me so even my math isn't that bad that i can tell that i've hit this nearly 290 off the tee i was never particularly a long hitter when i was competitive the fact that i can still hit it out that far is a real confidence boost to me but from here on out that's 150 to the middle we know that flag from laser in it is 167 so it's towards the back edge of the green which means that I don't really need to contend with anything that's towards the front edge. I'm going to trust my yardage for my golf club and use my focal point behind the green. We've got two little peninsulas on that back bunker. I'm going to use the right hand little cut in of the grass to play towards that. The ball's a little below my feet, so I'm going to try and hold off on this shot and just let it drift in towards that flag and use that aim point beyond the green so that I can commit fully to that swing because I know I'm not going to hit it into that bunker. And I've got a big wide open green to aim into. There we go. A little long just a little right of the flag looks like it may just be on the fringe but certainly puttable if for some reason you do overcook the tee shot and pull it way left there is the fairway bunker when we come up into it you'll see that the lip here really is shallow now we've already made a fairway bunkers video so we're not going to mess around with and talk about the techniques but depending on how far back you are to how far up you can realistically play any club that you would need to to get out of this bunker it's not really that difficult there's not a huge lip to get out of so we can still focus on hitting at at and at the green and focusing on pushing maybe even towards the flag depending on where that position is all right if you are a higher handicapper or if you've struggled with the tee shot don't necessarily force yourself to get as close to the green as you can this sprinkler head here 39 yards to the middle 58 to the back and 20 yards to the front but you can see everything begins to bottleneck up a little bit if we just move back another 10 15 maybe even 20 yards all of a sudden again we're in a big wide open expansive fairway to play into and we've got a more controllable half or full fuller swing depending on our ability level don't 
get sucked into forcing yourself into trying to attack the green, give yourself that fuller shot in so that you can then commit to a shot and a swing that you've spent a lot of time practicing on the range. So if you're playing competitive golf, you're not gonna be in golf carts, you're gonna be walking straight down the middle of the fairway. So you're gonna be looking at this viewpoint as you're approaching the green. Obviously this is a country club. Everybody's gonna be parking their golf carts over on the side there. You wanna kind of park it into the loop there, but I would recommend walking around the bunker this way. So that again, we're approaching the green from this viewpoint so we can have a look at where all the slopes are. So it comes off this shoulder here, off this bunker, pushing into the green. We can see that that's high there, coming down towards me here. So it's an uphill put, a little bit off here. And then this shoulder off here is gonna affect the put when the flag is at the back there. When we finish, we can walk off beyond the bunker, around the back side of the bunker to get into the golf carts. And that frees up the, the fairway and the green for the group behind you that's gonna be playing into it. But come in from the fairway into the green and exit around the back side of it. That keeps pace of play going, but you get to see all the viewpoints that you need to. If you come in from that side and in and around the back side of the bunker, you really miss a huge amount of visual cues that you can help yourself when you're actually approaching your putts. Okay, as we obviously get onto the green, we're gonna swap out, thanks to my caddy. We're gonna approach everything now. We've uh, got two golf balls up here. Obviously the one that's right by the flag was where if we'd had to lay up, we wanna lay up to our preferred distance to play the little easy pitch shot. And then the one that's on the back of the green was the iron shot from the middle of the fairway. Again, a little bit of housekeeping. That's a little two foot putt, so should be pretty straightforward. I'm not going to complete that one because this is the one we really want to focus on. I'm going to look at all my angles again. The shoulder coming off this bunker is pushing in now, but it's also pushing down towards the front of the green. And get rid of that golf ball. Make sure that you do repair your pitch marks. And then clean your golf ball. And all the while, I'm not getting tunnel vision, just looking from the marker to the hole, taking all the views from the sides. I don't think it moves as much as it visually looks because I think the shoulder of that bunker short just pushes in enough to hold it up a little bit. There's a little bit of movement, but not as much as it probably looks from that viewpoint. So this is the one I wanna really pay attention to. As my coach Ed always says, this is your most important viewpoint from the hole back to the ball. Because this is where the ball's slowing down, it's where it's gonna take the most break. Got a dead worm there on the green, so I can actually use that as a, a viewpoint because I think it's going to break just on the inside of that point. So if I actually hit the worm, it's a bad putt. So I don't need to clear it out of the way and just leave that there. And it's a good visual cue to come off. That's the one that hurts the most. 
get so stuck on making sure that you hit it on the right line you don't get the right pace and short in the jaws as well that might have just lipped out but we'll take the four that's a, about as easy a par as you can make and let's go thanks for watching if you're a new viewer don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave some comments on what you'd like to see as we go forward also if there's things that you don't like and you think we need to improve on let us know because again we're still learning how to do this we'll see you soon